Are you tired of paying a huge rent check each month? Are you tired of paying a huge rent check to someone else's mortgage each month? Do you feel like you could get into a mortgage for and, and pay less each month than you would pay in rent? Um, keep watching this video while I talk with Bobby on uh, down payments for a mortgage and possible ways around them. Jennifer Canepoli and I sell residential real estate in Destin, Florida. Um, today is our second video in the first time home buyer's guide and qualifying for a mortgage and we talk about what down payment you might need for a house. Um, Bobby will explain the benefits of putting 20% down when you qualify for a mortgage. He dishes on several ways to get into a mortgage with little or no money and we talk a lot about PMI, which is private mortgage insurance. So keep watching. We are recording, it's official. Fantastic. Okay. Hey, Bobby. Good morning, Jen. Um, this is Bobby Andrus, and he is with University, University Lending. Um, we talked last week about uh, first time home buyers and uh, qualifying for a mortgage with your, um, help me out. Credit score. Credit score. Credit, credit score minimums. Yes. Um, so this week we are going to be talking about down payment, PMI, and all of the ins and outs of that. I'm going to be asking Bobby some questions and he is going to give us his best answers. Um, thank you yes. again for being with us today. Um, I like meeting with you. Maybe uh, maybe the next time we do this, we can actually meet in person and do the video. Absolutely. <laughs> um, okay, so my my first question is, um, how important is it to put 20% down on a mortgage or what are the benefits or both? Um, so the benefits, I guess, are that you don't have any monthly private mortgage insurance. And okay. kind of the rationale behind it is that the banks look at you with a little bit less risk whenever you put 20% down on the back end, like their formulas and the way that they look at things is that's kind of a, a magical threshold to where you're now a little bit less risky. The other benefits are, are that your monthly payments are a little bit lower than you put less than that down. And of course, because you don't have any private mortgage insurance, your payment's going to be as low as it could theoretically be. If you put 20% or more down on a home or on a mortgage, can you get a lower interest rate that way? It's kind of weird that you may not necessarily get a lower interest rate because if you have PMI, the way that the banks look at it is that the company that is insuring your mortgage takes a little bit of that risk off. And because they are taking a little bit of that risk off, they are slightly more inclined to give you a little better of an interest rate, but barely, like very okay. minimal. Okay. So don't, I would say as a buyer, don't look at that as a benefit, but more of no PMI and um, a smaller monthly payment. Correct. You really just have to be like very financially savvy with all of your, your money and where it's allocated in order to start weighing out those benefits. Okay. So let's say I have a buyer and they don't have money to put down on a home and they really don't have a lot of money for closing. Like what is the bare minimum that someone, especially today would need to get into a house? Um, what I always advise people is bare minimum to have in the bank is probably around 1500 to $2,000. And that's just going to cover your deposit money, any sort of um, home inspections. And then sometimes we would require an appraisal up front and that the cost of that basically so plus a little bit of reserve so around that number should be kind of what you would be shooting for even though you may not put anything down on the house you still need to have a little bit of money for the transaction itself and that money that you put down you may recoup at the end of the transaction so long as the seller pays all closing costs and you don't run into any other kind of issues during the process with the home itself and additional repairs and additional costs here but I would say minimum 1500 to 2000 It was probably a safe number to have in the bank. Okay, so let's just say, because I don't want to get everyone's hopes up, this might not work for everybody. Right. 
what are the circumstances that that would work for someone? Like, is that seller paying for closing costs or, I mean, what's the, what's the highest amount of a loan we can, we, a buyer could get right now if they qualify for it? Like 90 something, like it's, it used to be 97 and a half, right? Percent. Uh, in terms of the, the loan itself and, and the down payment and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a couple different programs right now that the government runs. One of them is the USDA Rural Development, okay. and that's a 0% down loan. It does come with um, certain restrictions, certain stipulations. You, you are confined to purchasing a home in an area that is still defined as rural, and it changes over um, every few years once the, the government kind of looks at consensus data and determines what areas are rural and which aren't anymore. Okay. But that's your best bet. That would probably give you the best interest rate and the best mortgage insurance rate monthly. Okay. Um, the hands down absolute best bet is to do a VA loan if you do have the VA benefits or if you were ever in the military. So that, that's usually your first choice to go 0% down. And then the second option would be your USDA rural development. And then from then on, we're kind of looking at a conventional 3% down loan or an FHA 3.5% down loan, okay. to where that 3% that you have to put down or 3.5% that you have to put down, there are certain government programs, mm -hmm. bond programs, um, SHIP programs that we'll probably go into a little more detail in a future segment, but there are certain programs that will give you that money for the down payment assistance is what are called. Okay, so for some, for a buyer who doesn't qualify for VA or USDA, could essentially do an FHA or conventional with three or three and a half percent down, and then hopefully negotiate with the seller to help them with their closing costs. Correct. Okay, so those are that. That's a that's a good um, number of ways to get into a house with um, little or no money to put down. So that's good to know. Um, can you give us, because I'm sure that especially first-time homebuyers don't understand PMI or private mortgage mm -hmm. insurance. Can you explain that kind of briefly? Yeah, so these different programs, be it conventional, be it like, like I was saying, USDA, FHA, they all carry a monthly mortgage insurance along with your, your principal and interest payment and your taxes and insurance. You'll also see something rolled in there for PMI or your monthly insurance premium. For mortgage insurance and basically what that is or the best way to describe it is since you're not putting 20 percent down the banks see it as you are an additional risk and to compensate for that additional risk your loan has to carry this mortgage insurance for x amount of years or x amount of months until you either own 20 percent of the home after paying it down for so many years and then that amount will go away or for programs like usda programs like fha you, you technically carry that monthly payment for you for the life of the loan. The difference is, is that it adjusts downward or it goes down every year based on what your principal balance is every year. So the faster you pay down the principal, the lower that amount is every year. So does a VA loan ever have PMI? No, it, it doesn't have a monthly PMI. The only thing it does have is an upfront kind of um, what they call a funding fee. Right. And that is the compensation that the VA takes in exchange for you getting a loan with 0% down to compensate for the additional risk, basically. And it gets rolled into the loan amount itself. That's right. Now, that funding fee, would you say, I would think that like a, a VA versus conventional FHA, USDA, that that funding fee is still way less than what you would pay in PMI over the life of a loan for the other? Typically, yes. And then on top of that, your VA loans usually get a little bit better of an interest rate than your conventional and your FHA and your other loan programs. So if you can go VA, go VA. Um, oh, absolutely. Our favorite. Yeah. And then, um, so you mentioned FHA and USDA carries the PMI for the life of the mortgage. Yes. But conventional yes. does not. Correct. And I guess an additional benefit to a conventional loan is even if you were to put, say, 3% down the minimum or 5% or whatever you can afford at that time, and you do carry a little bit of private mortgage insurance, the monthly amount, um, at some point, that amount will go away. It'll drop off of your mortgage. And actually, 
depending on who your mortgage servicer is, after so many years, you know, your house is appreciating during that time anyway from whenever you purchased it. So at that point down the road, typically at least after two or three years, you can call up your mortgage servicer and say, hey, you know, I see this house down the street from mine is selling for a certain amount and I only owe another amount on my mortgage. So that's about 20% of what the, the current value is. Will you take this amount off? Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. Sometimes they'll require you to do an appraisal just to make sure that your home value is now X amount and your balance is Y amount and now you own 20% of the house. So that's not a refinance though. Correct, yeah, that's not a refinance. That's just that's kind just of an added benefit to going money. conventional. Okay. Yeah. So let's just say you have PMI on an FHA or a USDA um, mm -hmm. and you can you refinance to get the PMI off? Correct. Once you own so or once you believe you own so much equity in that property, you can what we would advise is you turn around, you refinance into a conventional loan, the PMI falls off, and then you're just left with your, your principal and your interest payments. And let's just, I know that for a refinance, you have to pay closing costs. Are those closing costs still as much as like if you're buying a house or are they less? They're typically a little bit less. Okay. Awesome. But it, it, it's going to vary state by state. So certain states are less than others. In Florida, it's a little bit more because we don't have a state tax. So the state generates revenue off of refinances and purchases and the um the recording of new mortgages and so on and so forth okay so one last question um mm -hmm. other than being va is there any way to get into a mortgage without paying 20 percent down and without pmi um no pmi no 20 percent down not really anymore there used to be say in the, in the past few years before Kind of we've entered this this new COVID-19 era with recessionary concerns and, and the economy is kind of weary about a possible recession on the horizon. Right now, I'd say you, you couldn't find anybody to do you alone like that. There may be one or two banks, but you would really have to hunt for them. Okay. But it might be worth your time if you did have that time to hunt for that particular program. But there's always trade-offs, and so even if they didn't have PMI, you would have a higher interest rate to compensate for the additional risk, is typically what we find. Gotcha. So, I mean, kind of um, another word of advice, before looking into certain down payment assistance programs, and this is probably actually better for the next segment, so you can edit this out, but um, we always advise looking to friends or family for a gift for the down payment before you look and you turn around and look at these programs because they do come with additional stipulations, um, usually a little bit higher of an interest rate. Um, the terms are a little bit not as good as if you did have the option to use your family. Another route would be to um, check into your 401k or your IRA plan and see if they allow for you to borrow against it. That way you're not hitting any sort of tax implications or, or you're getting hit with a tax penalty for early withdrawal. Since you're technically borrowing against it, you're still making the money off of the amount that was in that account, but then it does give you this option to, to borrow from it okay. for the use of the down payment on the house. So for, for first time home buyers, or if you just don't know this, when a buyer is putting, is giving a down payment, they have to prove where, they're, where it's coming from, correct? They have to show that they either had that money in the account or that's why you mentioned a gift from a family member and it has to be documented throughout with the loan, correct? Oh yeah, correct. Uh, I mean, for a lot of people that we work with, a lot of um, service workers, hospitality industry, people who get paid a lot of cash tips, I would always advise that, um, I mean, you keep a little bit of a record of it and go ahead and stick it in the bank. Uh, don't keep it in your mattress, don't keep it in your safe. We typically want to see funds vested in your bank account or seasoned in your bank account for at least two months prior to when you pull the trigger on looking at homes and, and getting a home under contract. I uh, that way everything looks above board. I will say I got in trouble by Corey many times when we were in college because I would always stash my tips 
somewhere and she'd be like, put it in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't stick like hundreds of ones in those little uh, ATM slots. Yeah. It doesn't really work out. Okay. So, yeah, it is advised. So uh, on down payment. So there are mm -hmm. huge benefits to putting 20% down if you can. Um, lower Correct. Money. Um, mm -hmm. won't have PMI. Correct. And um, there was You just have the equity in the house to start with. So okay. whenever you turn around and resell it, you're going to recoup that amount plus whatever the house is gained over that time. Yeah. All the way around, it's just if you can do it, do it. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And then if you can't put 20% down and you don't even really have a lot of money for closing costs, there are still ways around that. So if you are a first time home buyer and you know that your mortgage payment will be less than renting, there are still ways that you can get into a home. So please call a lender, call Bobby and um, try to work something out. And as far as PMI goes, there are many ways, maybe not around that, but if you have to have PMI, you can certainly work it out to where you can get rid of that as soon as you can. Which leads me to my next statement. If you do have a mortgage with PMI, work towards getting that eradicated as quickly as you can. Is that Correct, something? exactly. Okay, well, uh, Bobby, thank you so much for your time again this week. Um, in about two weeks, we're going to do a video on down payment assistance programs. Is that correct? Yes, we can post some information for you. Okay, sounds good. So we'll do that. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. And Bobby, we'll see you again in two weeks. Take care. Bye. Take care. See you. Okay. Our last video was on credit building tips. Uh, this video is on uh, a mortgage down payment and PMI. So what we learned today is do your best to put as much down as you can. Um, talk to your lender about ways you can get into a mortgage without 20% down or little to no money at all. Um, and if you do have to have private mortgage insurance on your loan or mortgage, uh, make sure to get rid of that as quickly as you can. Our next video will be on down payment assistance programs. So hopefully we can learn a little more about getting into a mortgage and um, we'll see Bobby again in a couple weeks. If you haven't done so already, go back to our first time home buyer's guide and qualifying for a mortgage and watch our video on credit building tips. Like our video, share our video, comment on our video. Um, and we will be back every Wednesday with fun, informative information on Destin, Florida or real estate in Destin, Florida. Bye.